So, hello everyone. Today I have Tara from uh, Body and Soul Natural Horses. And she's an expert in equine behavior. And I remember meeting you two years ago in Dubai International Horse Fair. And you have, you're amazing. You have such a magical hands with horses. And honestly, no, not everyone has it. And just to clear at one point, and I told you before we start, that being a professional in equine behavior is totally different than being a professional in the sport or being an athlete as a show jumper or a dressage rider or an endurance rider and no not everyone has the ability and the patience to work with horses and honestly i'm not i'm not an expert in behavior so that's why i have you today and we want to listen from your experience and like if you want to share cases with us through your life experience thank you so much for having me and i'm so happy to be here to share my knowledge whatever it has come through the years because the horses are the absolutely the best teachers in the world. If you mm -hmm. want to learn about horses, you should start to listen. You know, that is the first thing. Like the equine business, it's uh, all about uh, prices and, uh, you know, when you ride a horse, it's totally different from a behavior. You know, it's like, uh, I usually use human beings as an example, because we as humans, we have our parents to show us the way we are supposed to behave. There's different That's kinds true. of rules, boundaries, but what is okay to do and what is not okay to do, right? We have mm -hmm. a teacher at our own home, right? Our parents are responsible for our growth. They feed us, they change the clothes, and they put out the boundaries with love, right? Now, this is totally normal for a human being. We do understand that. Mm -hmm. But the problem comes with the horses because uh, humans have the uh, tendency to put out human behavior into horses. That's but it's true. a horse. <laughs> it's a horse. And we have to understand that we're the predators. We have the eyes in the front, the predators have. And we, uh, a lot of horses are scared of people because of our body language, which is too strong. And as a prey animal, their only instinct is to survive. So everything that we do, the way we talk, the way we use our voice, the way we use our eyes, all the presence on our faces, uh, those can be wrong signals to horses and that causes the problem to a cause, you know? Yeah, horses that's true. Not, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was just saying that's very true. And uh, as I told you before, uh, not everyone is, have, have the ability and the patience to work with horses because you know everyone most of the people i know are there just maybe for money or for the sport they're just washing uh stuff so i think in my opinion like patience is is very important do you agree absolutely patience is the most important thing with horses because first of all when we talk about behavior uh, I usually use to my client this example. Please let me know if you don't understand what I'm trying to, you know, tell. Talk no, no, about. I, I totally get you. Okay, okay. So let's see. Uh, my native language is Finnish. Okay, I live in Finland. I talk three different languages. Okay, mm -hmm. small talk Spanish, small talk French. Also, so if I go abroad, like when I came to Dubai, I do not speak your language. That is your mother tongue, right? It's Arabian. Right? Yeah. Okay. I do not talk it. I know a few words, small talk, but you know, when I want somebody to understand me, I will put in a lot of effort so I can communicate with you so you'll understand me what I'm trying to, you know, tell you. As yeah. a human being, when we go abroad, well, today it's pretty simple because we have Google. We can Google the language and see so we can communicate. But let's let's not go into that because I cannot Google a horse, you know. That's true. A phone to him, you know, like exactly. That's you know true. What I'm trying to say? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Humans, you know, we make an effort so we can communicate, so we can interact and understand what I want, right? 
Mm -hmm. I can tell you. That's totally true. Yeah. And I can tell you, I'm scared. You know, I don't understand. Uh, please uh, try to uh, explain yourself. Horses do not have an option. They use their body language, their, their faces, their tail from top to tail. They try to communicate with the human beings all the time what's going on. They have their own language. And this is where the problems usually come because humans do not understand the words in normal language. And this, as human beings, we should make an effort so we would understand the horse, you know? And this yeah. might be helpful to teach human beings to communicate with their horse. If there's a problem, there's always a reason behind the cause that builds up into a symptom, you know? That's true. And I, I totally you. agree with you. And Thank you. coming back, I remember uh, when we had the talk and you had your talk and I had my talk on the Dubai International Horse Fair. Yeah. And we, we agreed in one point, yes, we approve science and we agree science, but, but being in the field and being with the horses for a long time is totally different than a researcher who's coming, uh, yeah. doing a walk in two years and just coming with results and applying it. Yes, yeah. science might bring some facts, but having been with horses and being with many horses through lifetime and understanding their behavior is totally different than yeah. science and research yeah. reasons. Yeah. And sometimes both doesn't mean, but doesn't mean, but you know, scientists have rough mind, beha behavioral expert has rough mind, and you get me. You remember the point yeah. and the talk we were talking about. about yeah, I do. Stuff. But yeah. I know as a, you as a behavior, uh, I, tr I trust you because I, I saw your work and how you dealt with the horse at the Bike International Horse Fair, and I totally get what you say. And the mm -hmm. thing you have is needs a lot of patience and people who actually love the horse because looking at most of the people I know, you are one of the rarest people I know who go who are experts in behavior. Most of the people I know are in the sport. They are looking for results. Uh, they, they, they're doing it. They just want it to be rushed and fast. And also I was one of these people. And, and now I'm changed. And I think you agree. We are not with horses just to sit and canter and go on. It's mm -hmm. not just, it's not a machine. It's not, it's not nothing. You'll just sit on, go on, raise and canter. And too many people do that. And I respect it because that's what they do. And that's their sport, whatever it is. But what you do is very interesting because you are understanding the weak points and improving them. And, and, and this will help also even in the sport to improve the performance. And I would, like, I would like if you, do you have like any points to share or any advices or like cases you went through? Um, there's, there's several of them. <laughs> what would you like to know? Please help me out because my world is so huge and there's so many, many different kinds of uh, symptoms. Mm -hmm. Like my passion is stallions, as you already know. I love them because they show everything. But you just yeah. have to stay calm, no matter how much they kick at you with the front feet, because that is the stallion. They kick at you with the front feet and they bite you. And this is a typical behavior where they're trying to tell you something and they try to make you one, uh, one to the third, you know? But you mm. have to understand it because, well, you can see here. I don't know if you can see it. I have a bruise over here. Can you yeah, see it? I can see it. It's not, I can see it, but I can't, I can't see it properly. Yeah, it's just a small one, but I, my Lusitanical, I have a small two-year-old now. Now, mm -hmm. when, when they don't understand, they nip at you, you know? Yeah. And I was trying to teach him something, which is pretty hard, but it, uh, it, that, that is the way he learns to relax. Mm -hmm. And with horses, the number one to understand and communicate is patience, as we already know here, and then is trying to open up the dialogue. By moving the horse's feet, you can activate the brain. So that is the way a herd does. The leader of the pack, remember which one was it? It was the mayor, right? The yeah. oldest mayor, yeah. So anyway, so uh, usually when a client calls me, 
they have a problem, right? They don't understand why it has started to attack them, acting aggressive towards them. And uh, if they ride the horse, it bucks. There can be always several reasons behind it. But the most thing what I see is there's a lack of leadership. There's a lack of trust. Like you and me, if we can't trust our mom and dad to show us the way, which is the safe way, you'll get confused, you're scared, and you'll do anything to get out of the situation, right? Mm -hmm. Now, horses, because they're sensitive, they need a strong leader. But, a, but like, he has to have love with boundaries. Now, when I go to my client, I see what the problem is. I usually first start to watch the dynamics between the owner and the horse, the way they interact. And that's all I need to see, because that is always the problem. Most and cases. they tell you a lot. Oh yeah, oh yeah, because uh, like I told you in the beginning, when uh, we humans or people humanize horses, you know, it's a horse. It has five senses that it uses every single day to survive. And if it's not allowed to use its senses, and one of the things which is uh, my passion is to learn how to horses can be free. You know, you don't have to tie them down anywhere. They can yeah. stand by you free. You've seen my, my horses. I've There's seen you. That's thing. really amazing. And I can't do that. <laughs> yes, They're you just can. around you. They're like <laughs> your kids. I, I really love it. They're just moving around you and you're still in control. And this yes. is not easy. And honestly, I never can do it because I don't have the ability. I don't have the mindset. I don't have the experience as you do. And I wanted to ask you, what do you think uh, have you get many cases on bets and uh, cases related to bets? Because one of the problems I, I think we face and when, when we learn as kids uh, to ride horses, and that was my problem, because most horseback riding schools, they teach you when you want your horse to stop, just pull. Mm -hmm. And growing into the sport, I don't think, okay, yes, you pull, but you don't pull. There's too many things to do. And going with my, with my mare, uh, she's really hot-blooded. Uh, she has uh, Voltaire blood and Furiosa blood thoroughbreds. And yeah. go, doing this, that will make her go crazy and go yeah. more forward. So what, do you, what, what is your all-over view on bet? Like, do you use bets and when you ride? What do you think about them? Okay, excellent questions. Really good one. Okay, uh, now that we're going through uh, looking at the rules and stuff like that, I know a lot of people will get pissed off at me what I'm going to say next. I'm sorry for that already, but you know, I'm French and I always will be because uh, as the sports go on, we have are getting really big problems with road tour and LDR. Mm -hmm. Now, that is not writing. That is absolutely not writing. Uh, that's, that's a lack of knowledge. That's a lack of uh, handling the horse. And by using a harder grit, it's a lack of knowledge also. Now by pulling, you'll get a horse to resist. And mm. this is now we need to rewind way back because if you build a house, what is the first thing that you do? Sorry? If you build a house, what is the first thing you have to do? If you build uh, a house, I, uh, I'll be welcoming and very nice. No, no, no. If you build sorry, a house, yeah. yeah, no, sorry. If you build a house, oh, I build a house. I should have a proper foundation. Yeah, a proper exactly. foundation, something that will hold up what will be built in with time and time and time. A strong yeah. foundation that Absolutely. will be able to hold and and have all the weight on through the relationship or let's say the house. Exactly. Yeah. So this is the first problem. You need to have everything under control by doing your homework in the ground work. The horse has to look at you in the eye all the time. You do not talk to the hindquarters because that is the main thing. 
uh, you cannot ride a horse until you handle it from the ground. It will need to trust you because think about how everything changes by you getting on its back. Remember, it cannot see you. It has to turn your head and see, oh, okay, he's in the back, he's in the back. You know, it's a yeah. different situation to the horse. He's got a better predator in the back. Yes. In different stages, you have to teach the horse. And this is what I keep seeing, Muhammad. This is what I keep seeing, people riding the horses without control, you know? And yeah. then you keep pulling and pulling, and the more you pull, the more the horse will resist, you know? Yeah, that's true. And this is why I talk about classical dressage, because that teaches the horse uh, to use the biomechanics, which is my passion also, and you will get the horse to use the hindquarters where the motor is attached. Mm -hmm. this, the reins, that is just a small thing about riding. The most important thing is to get the horse light, and to get a horse light, you have to have a relaxed horse. Like mm -hmm. hot-blooded horses, thoroughbred, Arabians, they need a very, very sensitive rider with a good seat. And I would love if we'd go back to those days where people rode without their hands. Yes. You know? Because yeah. if you don't know how to ride without hands, you don't handle a real horse. <laughs> and it's not, it's not easy. It, it, it needs a lot of work. It yeah. needs patience and needs a lot of work and it needs you to say because you know yes we might be i i'm not a show jumper right now i don't have the time like i have my horses just for the sake i love them but yeah. also let's talk about other people let's be in other people's shoes let's say if i was a professional show jumper or professional athlete i uh i need also to take a time to also understand the horse because all I'm, most of the cases I see on the sport, people just get go on the horse, and sometimes they don't have, they don't know what's going on. It's very confusing, and it doesn't come. You don't become a behavior expert from just riding for five years or becoming a professional and riding or being an amazing, let's say, amazing rider who can ride and jump and do all the dressage and show jumping things. That's totally different than being a professional with behavior because as as you know, it takes a lot of patience. And oh, yeah. I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. As I am I'm a horse rider, but I'm not I, I know nothing about behavior. I always get confused. I need someone to help me. I need another eye to look around to to direct me into what's happening because I don't understand. And also one thing, you being a behavior expert. Behavior, we need them more in our life because let's say now from a veterinary medicine prospect, taking your horse, uh, let's say they have a problem with, with a muscle or whatever, something caused by riding. Yeah. Behavior expert would explain things more properly to vets in order to vets uh, to, vet to diagnose. Yeah. And like working with you and listening from you and listening to other horseback riders it shows the difference and it shows the work you put on with your horses. And I really adore it. And I wish one day that I have the ability to understand horses as you understand and have the relationship with my horses, uh, horses as you do, but it takes a lot of time. And mm -hmm. I also, like, I really miss the Bayer International Horse Fair. I can't wait, like, to meet you there one more time. It's been, like, two years, but it's easy. it feels like more, right? It yeah. feels like it doesn't feel like two years ago. No, no. <laughs> yeah. We had so much yeah. fun. Yeah, we had so much fun. And like, do you have any advices for people? Like, like what, what is the most thing you always advise people who want to like understand their horses more, uh, build up a relationship with their horses? Because you know, some people, sometimes I know a lot of people who really want to understand their horses more, who really want to teach the horse, who really want to have a good relationship with the horse. But you know, 
it doesn't always work. You know, as you say, it's an animal at the end. It's not a human or it's not a machine that you just click on a button and it will just do whatever you want to do. Like, do you have advice for these people? Okay, the first thing is to stay calm, no matter what. If the horse rears up, tries to bite you, whatever, you stay calm. You can never, ever show horses your emotions. You can never, ever show your horse that you're angry. Now, this is uh, something that you have to close inside. They read you in and out all the time, boy. They read you. They know everything about you before you know yourself. So they mm. read you and they look where they can, you know, put you down because they are smarter than human child, you know? Yeah. This is the thing, you know, people don't understand that your horse is smarter than you are because they are survivor and they need to read you all the time so they understand if they need to escape you so you can't corner them in or anything. And your body language has to be firm, calm, relaxed, all the way from your breathing. Now, people are so stressed these days that I get stressed when I'm with humans, you know? This is, uh, I barely talk to humans anymore because I'm always with the horses. And this yes, is a little awkward, you know, because uh, I don't remember when I've really had a long talk with anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I, I'm with my horses all the time and they love to see me all the time and they're always happy when I come. I get, uh, they run to me and, you know, we have a communication. They look at my body language and what kind of a mood I come to the stable. They look about my pace, they listen to my heartbeat, they listen to my breathing, and they see everything before me. So my rule number one at my stable is stay calm, always come with a smile. That's very important, honestly. And, and as I told you, with horses, and also I was known in the stable, the shampoo guy. My horse hates me. You know, I always, I just oil her hair, braid her hair, shampoo her, oil her hair, braid her hair, shampoo her. That's like me. And my mare, as I told you, she's hot blooded and she's not a person. She's not, she's not a person. She's not a mare that she wants to be touched all the time. And when, when she goes angry or where she pulls her ears back, I'm never calm. I go and become angrier than her and show my emotions and that's stupid <laughs> looking at it from now I've, i'm just acting like another mayor around her yeah and this is very important because like being calm is also being patient and also taking it slowly and i've never i've never managed to do it and i i think that's the main thing being calm and just letting the results and letting the horse to adapt to the cap capacity or the power you're you're enforcing it on the horse. Yeah. Do you agree with this? Um, we go back to the groundwork again, Muhammad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what mares love? Well. <laughs> they love, thank you for trying. Thank you for trying. You need to thank them for the smallest try. And then they'll go, they'll go oh, he understands me. He praises me. Mm -hmm. Ladies in the house, you have to praise them. Well, the smallest price. Of course, every horse needs their praise. But mares, they need a lot of thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, we human <laughs> beings intend to want to have right here, right now, hopefully yesterday. But mares don't work like that. And I, I hear and uh, I see a lot of people that has mares uh, putting it down onto the hormones. And this is your area. You understand hormones. And that is why. Oh, totally. Totally. Hormones play a major role. And people need to understand that mares go through Easter cycle where yeah. there are different uh, follicle uh, triggering hormones, et cetera, from hormones affect your personality. And the problem is that's what we try to educate people from a scientific yeah. prospect and from a behavior expert prospect. That also hormones play a major role in mares. And can see your mare one day calm and the other day she's 
on fire and that that goes all the way to the hormones they have and i've seen too many cases people people taking out uh trying to through science and through veterinary medicine trying to control their male hormones and i honestly didn't i don't like it i i don't approve it somehow because it has side effects on the health yeah. of the horse yeah yeah and this is the other issue where we come to the digestion and the nutrition yeah uh, but this, this was just my pinpoint to the thing that always people when they're looking for a horse i don't want to have a mare okay why i love mares there's nothing wrong with them you just have to understand them they're ladies in the house you have to pamper them you have to have strict boundaries you have to love them you have to yeah. be there for them you have to understand them but keep, people keep blaming the hormones all the time like blah 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 it's not the hormones you have to look at yourself look in the mirror how do you behave around your mare you have to say ah you know i have a mare at my stable okay i have a stallion at my stable and i have a gelding at my stable and i will be having more horses into my stable to training so listen my stallion is about oh uh, maybe i don't know about feet but um maybe like 10 meters from my mare from the mare mm -hmm. all good no problem and my 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 farrier told me that he was looking at my stallion he said there's something wrong with your stallion i said what he's too social i said well you know the typical stallions you see are like going all over the place you know they're aggressive or attacking but my mm -hmm. boy is calm because i'm calm this is the communication and interaction you have to teach them even though they're almost nose to nose with my the mayor and my stallion no problem but this is all up to me how do i want my uh stallion to act around mares how is the mayor acting around my stallion you know this yeah. is something you have to teach them I mean, this mare runs a lot, you know, when she sees me coming, she, she runs to the fence and she wants to be close to me. And it's not even my mare. It's my client's mare. But, you know, if you give them the law, if you give them the passion, and I will tell you from, from the day that we started, this is going to be an amazing story about rescue horses. You will not, yeah. you will not see that this is the same horse. Let me tell you that. I am so happy with this mare. It is a huge breakthrough with this mirror and um we come down back to the thing stay calm be patient we humans need are too much rushing into things right here right now of course it does not work that way i'm a former bodybuilder okay mm -hmm. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm here yeah i've seen still there you know yeah but <laughs> it's I do not work out anymore, but I shovel every single day. Yeah. Shovel crap. <laughs> so, but my bicep didn't grow in one day, right? Not in two days. We're talking about years. You need to think about the nutrition, think about the rest, think about no stress, and workout. It goes in a cycle. Horses are the biggest athlete that we work with. You know, as a former show jumper, what does it need? Mm -hmm. It needs power. It needs muscles to grow in balance with the joints and so on and so on. The tendons get really stressed if you do it too much. Yes. So your balance, right? Yes. Now people forget about the balance. You know, they either work out like 24-7, they forget to eat, they forget to rest, no results you know there that's, has to be a balance that's a very important point and i i never i never i all i sometimes forget about it but that's that's basically everything the balance that we have to have with our horses that's very true and the and the effort we put to understand them from from science points from a science overview and also from a behavior overview and i also i've, I've had like growing through uh, the, as an equestrian, uh, we always learn something new every day. And we always learn from people like you who have like a long, long and huge experience with the uh, horse's behavior. And I, 
I wanted to ask you, so what, uh, like I saw your cult, he's so, he's so beautiful. Like, what do, you, do, what do you agree, like what's your plan with him? What are you planning to do with him? Well, like he's what do you have for future for him? Oh yeah, everything is planned. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Now, when he he's a Lusitano, and Ooh, uh, he I has a that. great yeah, he has a great pedigree. So I, you know, I'm a pedigree guy. I, love I know, pedigree. I know, I know. I That's what pedigree. I told you. Yeah, yeah. I will show the pictures of his dad. He is amazing, and I've played with his dad. He's a beautiful stallion, and they look alike. They're like father and son, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, this is gonna be my riding horse. So this is going to be something that I will, you know, work through everything, you know, from the from the groundwork to the writing. Yeah. And he's also going to be a, a stallion, so I can, you know, get like uh, what do you call it, breeding stallion. Mm. So he, he has such a nice confirmation, and <laughs> and and looking at and looking at young horses and looking at colts or fillies, you know at their confirmation, how they stand up, how they act, you know, you know about their owner. Cause you know, do you, do you get me? Yeah. And yeah. That, that, like that tells me a lot. Cause looking at horses when they are young and they're growing through and how horses act around their owner and how the owner deals with the horse is totally tell, tells me a lot about you. And that's where the trust, that, that's why I trust you. Cause you know, I know the work, I've seen your work in Dubai International Horse Fair. It was amazing. And like, I hope one day we get the chance to meet as soon as possible. Oh, yeah. This pandemic gets over. And like, you need to come to Dubai. I, did you know that this uh, international horse fair was to the off? It didn't go on, unfortunately. What? Really? Since when? Yeah. Because of the pandemic thing. So it didn't, uh, yeah, it didn't go through this year. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Yeah, let's forget about it. We're here yeah. just for her. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. And honestly, um, what what do you think? Are you going to? Are you planning to go through breeding yourself with, as yeah. you say, with the stallions? Are you planning? Are you yeah. excited for it? breeding? Oh, is yeah. Horse riding and and everything is on the side, and breeding is totally on another side. It's a total oh, yeah. different world. Oh yeah. I love it so much because. It feels that I put the effort to like, like to create, to create the, like, it's my horse. I, 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 I produce this thing. It's, yeah. it's the result of my work and for me planning which pedigree to mix up with, which stallion and which mare. And, yeah. oh, I love breathing so much. The, the problem right you. now, what I'm working on is tell my studies in the science, it takes a lot of time for me, yeah. for me. Yeah. So I'm planning for everything to go back to normal after my degree. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, the yeah. thing that, that I wanted to mention is um, uh, the, the writing which I sent you about the OCDs in horses. Now, yeah. I just want to quickly pinpoint to this one because uh, yes, please go on. The the humans have a lot of OCDs, and it's acceptable, right? We understand. Yeah, yeah we we can have Tourette Tourette syndrome. We can bite our nails. Uh, we can pull our hair. We have yeah. disorders, anxiety orders, all kinds of orders. But you know, the most saddest thing is that the horses does too. And uh, like weaving, um, air sucking, there's a lot of history behind those. And I've seen all kinds of gears and gadgets being built around horses to make them not to do it. But that's just, you know, like a band-aid to a cause. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take away the reason to a symptom. And this is my work area also uh, to fix the problem. Uh, there's no quick fixes. There's this knowledge and understanding about the behavior. Like we humans, we go to the drink on talk. You know, if there's anxiety, uh, they're medicated. And in my opinion, excuse me for being frank, it's just a band-aid. It, it, it doesn't take away the cause to a symptom. Because there's always a reason. 
you know, to trigger and it builds up and builds up and then there's the panic attack or whatever. If you do not go through the problem, you have to face the problem, you have to talk about the problem. Horses don't have the option to talk about the problem. That's true. And also the problem is too many people who have a lot of experience in riding and they're good at riding. I know too many amazing riders. They know, they sit on the horse and they know their magic. They can handle the horse. But they never like to talk about their problems because not everyone is perfect. You have to talk about your problems. You have to address them because if you won't address them with time, it will accumulate and it will come more and more and more. And then suddenly, as you say, the foundation, the foundation will be destroyed and everything about that will be destroyed. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So this is why you have to look at the language, what the horse is telling you. Then there's the bubble horses, which I've written about. Also, they do not tell you anything. They're totally dead inside. You know, their horse, their ears are like hanging out and they're in the bubble. There's no interaction in the eyes. And sadly, I've seen too many of those. Uh, I've had this uh, one mare uh, recently. Uh, I've been working with her. Uh, she was a top cookie, let me tell you that. But I got through, finally, I got through, and she came to be one of my best friends. If I can t talk about a horse like a best friend. But she really did, because, but it took me a while to figure out why, what had happened, and the horse told me it has been beaten several times on the head mm -hmm. uh, and all over the body. Because usually when I do the fly test, I call it the fly test, I just, you know, barely touch the horse because they get irritated about a fly that keeps flying around. They switch with the yeah, tail. Yeah, they're very sensitive, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she didn't react nada. So I pushed with the finger, nothing. I pushed harder, nothing. I mean, she was numb. Let me tell you, numb all over the body. There was no reaction. Oh gosh. Oh yeah, tell me about it. Oh even God. Tried, even tried to communicate with, he tried to bite me. The first thing he saw me, he came and attacked me. And I was like, well, this is not the way to act around me. I'm a leader. Yeah. Then he was like, what happened? What happened? Ooh, and she was like startled for a minute because I told her off, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the first uh, step to starting to communicate because she, she looked at me and uh, she was like, she's serious, this is business, she's talking to me. But let me tell you, Mohammed, it took me a long time before she opened up to me because she was in the bubble you know, she needed to hide everything so nobody could see that she was in pain. You know? It was yeah. terrible. You know, my heart was crying. Even though I cannot show them my tears. But with some horses, I do cry. And now I'm starting to cry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's no, it's, I totally get it. It's really emotional. Like, oh, having yeah. this relationship and have, living your uh, and living your whole life with horses. And putting your effort and your life is based on it, it's, it gets really emotional. Oh, and yeah. no one, honestly, I adore people like you and people like you I look up to because I am, because it takes a lot of effort and hard work and life and experience and also going through pain and also going through uh, maybe failure than to success. It takes too many, too much and a lot to become uh, an expert in behavior than just becoming a horse rider, let's say, or a show jumper or a dressage yeah. rider. It's yeah. totally different. And I would like to address it and tell people these two things are different. Yeah. You, you get me? And also it doesn't come within just three years or four years. I see too many people coming out talking that they are experts in behavior, blah, 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 blah. But we know this thing doesn't come in three, four years, let's say. It, it's solid, it needs a lot of experience, hard work, patience, and it needs a lifetime, it needs education, and not everyone has it. And like, 
I like I always like I think you will agree with me. Our advice to people who ride horses. I not, right now I won't call myself as a horse rider because I don't ride as much as before. But like I would like always like my main advice is always to address problem before they get deeper. Do you agree? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because this is this is what you can see. It's rolling stone, you know. Uh, we could save a lot of money uh, sure. by getting there before the, the reason gets into a symptom. We need veterinary care, uh, sure. of course we do, but always you have to, the better you know your horse. This is what I'm trying to tell, tell people. The more yeah. you spend time with your horse, the, you see if something is wrong right away. Yeah. Like, okay, it, 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 there's something wrong with my horse. I don't know what it is, but there's something wrong. And you have to believe the gut feeling that you get. It never lies yeah. because yeah. you, as the horse owner, should know your horse the best ever way. You know. And when you need a veterinarian, you address it to the veterinarian. But what I, what I'm telling also, what I would like for people to understand that everything should be team work. You know, you yes. told me well in the beginning, and I totally agree with you because we need an expert behavior reason, you know, that, that takes care of the horse behavior, whatever mm -hmm. it is. If it's pain indicated, I can see it. I have to educate for that one also. The horses mm -hmm. talk all the time. And you save a lot of money if you do not waste your money on bad nutrition. The feed has to be number one. Hay is number one. The minerals, number two. Usually that's all the horse needs because you, the horses are too much today. They eat too much, they lack the exercise that they would need. So that mm -hmm. is why there starts to go in the wrong also. But yes, totally, totally, totally. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And uh, coming, uh, as I told you, being down to earth, yeah, like looking at you, you're very modest and you're very, you have a lot of experience, but you are very, uh, very genuine about it, about it. And you're very nice. Looking at so many equine people and being in the equestrians, let's be honest. Some people, uh, they're, as I say, they go through experiences and stuff and they know much, but they don't like to show that they lack the knowledge. Yeah, and, yeah. And lacking the knowledge and admitting that you lack the knowledge is, is the point that you start actually to solve the problem. Because if you keep it by yourself, and if you keep showing the perfection on in social media or to your friends or whatever, it won't work. It won't be solved, your problem. You have to address it. You have to ask help like people, people from people who are experts in behavior like you, from veterinarians or scientists like me growing in the field, mm -hmm. from also other people. And I think, as I say, addressing the problem early and talking about it and thinking about it, not just like ignoring it. Yeah, it'll be solved. It, it won't be solved alone. No. It won't be solved alone. You have to address it as soon as possible, no matter what is related to behavior, no matter what is related to the, to the skeleton of the horse or the muscles of the horse mm -hmm. and the, uh, the riding. You have to address it. And my mistake was... I've never addressed my problems early. I've, I've always had the mindset where like, I, ha I will have the time, it will go through, it's nothing. You know, I had one of my mares, I don't know if you remember, I told you she has a problem with the sacroiliac joint. Yeah, yeah. She has yeah. an issue with the sacroiliac yeah. joint. And I always sat in the back and I always knew there is something going on with this horse. Yeah. There is something, um, you know, you move on the horse, you're sitting, you're riding the stride, you're sitting, you feel the trot, you feel the canter. You feel there's something, the horse is moving weirdly. It's like, no, it's fine. Nothing would happen. It will be so. Two weeks on, I keep pushing the horse hard, trotting, cantering, just doing hard work. Later on, the horse wasn't able to get me anymore. And now I can't even trot her or canter her. Yeah. Do you get me? Yeah, and, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah I and this is where we come from. And this is why we are here talking. We are, yes, we, are, we might not be talking about deep issues, like stuff related to tech or gear, but we're talking about things that are basic things that people really need to address because addressing these stuff, people won't go through suffer or problems more.
right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because the, when we're talking about a prey animal, it does not want you to see that it is in pain. That's a prey animal. They don't want to show the predators that you know they're feeling low or feeling vulnerable because it needs to be in survival mode all the time. And this is where you have to have the certain kind of antennas to see everything. And this is what I try to teach my clients that the more you spend time with your horse, the sooner you'll see if something's wrong. And then you can address it, right? So yeah. uh, I've seen a lot of bad kissing spine issues. Uh, Sacra Ibiacos clients, I've had several. And uh, it, it's fixable, but it takes time. Not it all does. kissing spines are fixable. But, you know, here we come back to the patients. Uh, when yeah. horses come to, to rehab at my place, uh, well, to be honest, it's a certain kind of type of people that wants to have help. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I usually ask my clients, so how did you find me? And uh, uh, how, how, was it easy to get in contact with me? Everything towards me was easy. But the ego, their own ego uh, suffered yeah. because they had to come down from the pedal and ask for help. You know, yeah. because all equestrians have this uh, ego about I know everything. That's very true. And I also reflect back at myself. I used to think I know everything, but growing in the science, I know nothing. I'm just learning everything. <laughs> I'm learning from behavior experts like you. I'm learning from my friends and my pathologists in the university. I'm learning from my professors. I'm, I'm learning from my environment. And honestly, yes, I think. I don't want to talk about rest, but as an equestrian, as an horse person, reflecting on the years before, I used to think that I know everything, and no one knows everything uh, around me yet, but it's just me. I'm an old person, you don't know anything, don't talk to me, I know this stuff. I think this is the problem of most equestrians, in my opinion. Yeah, and it is sad because I do, you know, even though I've spent the whole time with horses, uh, I'm, ne I'm never going to be ready. There's always something new. Horses teach you your the through the lifelong time. You know, they, they change all the time. They grow. It's an amazing world. If somebody says, I know everything, you know, they can walk that way and I'll, and I'll walk that way. Because there's nothing in common with us. You are mm -hmm. never, ever ready with horses. They teach you every single time about yourself they do. and you like what you see. When you looked at your horse, that is you. So, and this is the ego thing, you know, people do not want to see their mistakes, their faults. It is painful to admit, I do not know this. But you have to be humble with your horse. You have to go down on your knees. That's true. That's very true. You have to crawl to get their attention. You have to be there for them. You know how many times I've been down on my knees and cried? You know, really? you know, but you know, for every single course, I've learned something about myself maybe, or they have told me another way. Because when I train horses, I listen to the horse, it shows me something, and mm -hmm. I praise it for it, and there it is. This is not anything Wi-Fi or something like that. You just have to listen, and you have to come down and be humble with the horse. So it is so me the way you understand. You know, they have IQs as well. And that testing, I usually do the first time I see the horse, I have my own method that I test the horse's IQ to see on what level it understands me, on what level can I communicate with it. With some, it takes a little bit more work. With some, just like that. Just like that, you know? I'm no good with numbers. I, I, I'm really poor with numbers. Math, mathematics? Oh my 
I do not understand that. Nothing. That's my strength. With horses, it's exactly the same thing. You just have to find the right way to communicate with it. We'll come back to the patients again. Yeah, the patience. The patience is the most, to me, as I told you, patience is the most important thing and the thing that will lead you to the result you're aiming for. And like before, like I'm very happy I had you in this session. We talked, we addressed many important things and we highlighted them to people who love horses or people who want to go into the field and grow as equestrians. Do you have like any things you want to add in this interview? Any advices for people who are going to watch this interview with their horses or related to the ex equestrian field they are in? Oh, thank you. That's a good question. Okay. Um, this is not going to be nice though, but this is something that everybody should find about themselves is uh, let's make a test for every single one. If you want to see how your communication goes with your horse. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how you keep them in the paddocks outside in Dubai or are they inside the stables at this time of the year? Oh, my horse is like, it depends on the weather because you know Dubai is very hot right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's very hot. So yeah. horses, like normally stables get them out in the night time, they go out, they roll maybe yeah. for around two hours, at least then they go back into the stables. Yeah. Okay, that's a good point. So this is the weather issue again. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, every single horse owner can do, make this test. Okay. Let's, let's say that your horse is out in the paddock. It's mm -hmm. free roaming there. Uh, I want you to walk to the fence and see, does the horse come to you? Okay? Or do you need to go and try to catch it? You know, there's two, two sizes. Either the respect is there with the horse or not. Simple as that. Horses are pretty, they're simple. Mm. Well, so this is the first test where you can see where you are with your horse. Doesn't want to come to you or doesn't want to run away from you. you know? That's amazing. And honestly, funny thing, I, my mare never came to me. She always tried to run away from me and I'm running with the halter, running after her to put it on her face. And that's, a, that's, a, that's such a thing to address. And that yeah. talks a lot, honestly, about my relationship and her relationship. Yeah. That we have too much to work on. And yeah. I'll get you yeah, good, good. And you can teach it, you know, your horse will love to come to you. There's a thing that you can teach, but I, you know, we can go through that someday. And yeah. uh, I can even make a video about it, how to address a horse that doesn't want to get to you yet. Because there's several things behind it. Why it doesn't want to come to you. And, and always it comes back to the thing, which one of you are the leader? You know, what I was mm -hmm. talking about, trust and uh, the leadership, because horses needs to have the leader. We all don't have those mares in the pastures. We don't have the herds running around, that there's always the mare showing the way that this is the right way to behave. You stop nagging at one or what? So we are supposed to be the horse's own human. Yes. And it needs to be safe with us. That is number one with horses. It has to feel safe. It'll come to you if it feels safe. It'll come to you if it respects you as a leader. This is not about humanizing. This is, this is behavior. They need to have a leader that will show them the way, what is the safe way. And when it's scared, it'll look up to you and ask you, do I have to run? Or is it okay to stay by you? It always asks you, and you need to communicate with the horse. You have to be with you. You have to be there with the horse. Your mind cannot go to all over the place when you're with the horse. The horse has to look at you all the time. It'll ask you all the time, is this okay? Do I have to be scared? Do I have, because that's always the question. Do I have to run away? It's about survival instinct. That's it. It's a horse, and we're humans, we're the critters with the eyes in the front. The horses have them in the thigh. 
So we need to look at our own behavior. How do we behave around our horses, you know? If we come in tense and angry and with uh, all kinds of you know, fake facial expressions, it'll run away for sure. <laughs> yeah. you, have a bad day. you do not show it to your horse. You take it out of your chest and you throw it away. Like you always come with a smile, shoulders down, calm breathing, heart rate down, all full of love. And you come to your horse, it'll love you. And it'll come to you because you have your, that you're worthy. I will call it worthy of leadership towards your horse. Yes. You to earn it. You cannot yeah. get it. You need to earn it. Just like we humans, we respect someone. I respect you, Muhammad, and I am so pleased that we met. I mean, I'm it's, so it's pleased I met, I met you. Oh yeah. And I'm oh, very yeah. happy I met you and I'm very glad that we made this interview to be uh, this let's say discussion session so people listen how it is in the equestrian field and yeah. it's not easy. It's no. never easy. Horses are never easy to work with. If horses no. were easy, everyone would be a behavioral expert or a yeah. horseback rider, let's say. And I'm very happy to have you right now and we we we'll should meet as soon as possible when everything goes back to normal and you should oh, yeah. come to our international horse fair and yeah. thank you very much for accepting my invitation do you have any last, do you have any last words for the people who are going to watch this um whenever you need my help i'm here for you you know you can That's shoot me an email or you know ask me it, it's you don't have to be embarrassed I'm trying to, you know, tell people you don't have to be embarrassed if there's something you do not know. Just put down your ego and ask if you don't know. There's nothing wrong with it. If you have a headache, what do you do? You take a painkiller and you do not think about it anymore. But yes. why do you have a headache? Figure it out. You yes. know, there's always somebody to ask. And uh, equestrian people usually go to their coach. They don't know about behavior. Sorry, excuse me. They don't know about behavior. They know about riding technique. That is all technique. But they do not understand horse behavior. Uh, there's nothing wrong about asking. You know, if I don't know anything, or, or there's, there's a question in my diary about why did the horse do this? I look at the horse and try to figure out why it did what it did. And there's always an answer. Well, you have to listen, you have to look, you have to visualize it, you have to understand it. And usually I do a lot of research. I'm an independent researcher. I do a lot of yeah. research. Yes, and, you are. You know, it's, it's like, if you don't know it, find it out. There's always somebody who knows. And like I said, you can ask me. I'm here to help. But you have to lose the ego. Yes. And so, I know. I know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're all vulnerable. This is, this is uh, with horses, it's a painful life. And I see a lot of frustrated people going around because, and then, then there's always, they're accusing the horse of being stupid. And it is such a dork. And I mean, it hurts me, Sir, yeah. it hurts me when they talk about their horses like that. They're not Sir. stupid. They're more smart than you are. And it, it that is, you know, I don't know if, if, why, but I usually put it the lack of knowledge. You don't understand the horse. But yes. I do not go, I mean, oh. do not call your horse stupid because it's not. Yes. <laughs> and, and if, sorry, that, that, that's an advice to say. That's an important advice to say. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So because yes. um, I keep spreading all over, because, uh, there's so much things in my head that I want to share with you guys. But, um, if you call your horse stupid, I'm being frank here. You're talking about yourself. Yes. Because it's your mirror. The only one you can blame is yourself. If the horse does a mistake, you can blame yourself. Figure it out and teach it the different way so you guys understand each other. But it's never ever the horse's fault. It's a horse. It does everything that you advise. And if it behaves badly, 
I used a human word now, badly. Yeah. Uh, it's all up to you. Because there's a lack of communication. It might talk Chinese. You might talk English. You guys don't understand each other. That's the reason to a cause that builds up into a symptom. So this is the thing we have to address ASAP. So it will get dangerous because this is the next situation. What we'll bump into is the horse will get aggressive. It will start to defend itself no matter what. And the time will come when it will turn high water and kick at you for the last time. People have gone dead just like that because yeah. they're not giving up. They have their limits. They can, you know, they will humble horses can take as much as they can take. And they'll get into the bubble horses, which I spoke about earlier. They don't have any situation to get out of it or it'll attack and defend itself. Yes. What does human, humans does the same thing. But it's okay. That's true, yeah. We know, are we when, the same thing. Yeah, because when you lose your marbles, <laughs> you lose your marbles. And yes. this is, you know, the, the yeah. horses are yeah. trying to tell you several times, I'm warning you, I'm warning you. And the next time, crap happens. We do and not true. want these situations, you know. You, you have to listen to the voice. That's very true. And as I wanted to say, for every for every action, there's an action. Do you get me? Yeah. Yeah. So the horse doesn't react for no reason. No. Yeah. You keep on I'm very, pushing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very happy I had you today for this uh, session, and I can't wait to meet you as soon as possible. And I will share your link of your article down on the caption of this post, and I will see you soon. Thank you very much for this one. You take care. Love you so much. Love you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, let me just stop recording it. I'll just... Yeah. What do you want to...